Okay, 6-6, six, six. so we've got our three layers going on now. We've got our foreground element masked out against our real-time element, and then we've got our background. So we want to get on with green screening, but there is an important step to take into account before green screening, and it's to do with your colors. Okay, so say you have a video feed coming in. This is really useful for virtual production. You might be filming it with a particular camera, say a Canon or something, and that will have a particular particular LUT. That's the look of the camera because of the way the camera processes colors. So you want this camera to come into Unreal, which has its own way of processing colors. And then you want that to display on your monitor, which also has its own way of processing colors. So color spaces are just different based on different manufacturers and things. It seemed like people couldn't decide on one. So there's an infinite amount of color spaces. There's some amazing research done on this by Jake G. Water. I would highly recommend his videos for getting a deep dive into color spaces he really helped me understand them also the unreal engine documentation is really good for this uh, i also found this amazing video about doing this in uh, maya i think it was and it really describes uh, how color spaces have a different amount of gamma and to go from a linear color space to a gamma color space is basically changing the frequencies to get different kind of shadows and things understanding this stuff is really cool because you can make really uncanny effects and it's actually quite quite cool uh, you can kind of have the effects of old games by mixing the light being in one color color space and the objects in another color space but for this kind of linear workflow we want to make sure our camera is coming in not being the colors aren't being all messed up by unreal it's not gonna be all blown out looking wrong this is generally something you can't really fix with color grading that easily either it's much easier to just find out what your LUT is of your camera send that through unreal's color space and then send that out to your computer so unreal works in linear srgb this is how you want to do it if you're if you're filming yourself with a particular camera and sending that in you want unreal to pick up the camera and open color io is going to be the kind of dictionary or library of color spaces and it's going to convert it for us so our camera can send in the data the imagery in its color space then ocio will convert it to unreal's color space and then we will use ocio again to convert the image from unreal's color space to our monitor's color space so this sounds quite complicated but it's really necessary if you're looking at absolutely matching the colors coming in from your camera and going out and it's really useful for this real-time linear color workflow that we're going to be doing so I'll just show you how to install that let's jump into it okay so I'll just show you how to install the open color IO configuration what you can do is go follow the link in the description go to open color IO and grab this aces release you can also get this from their website, but go down to the zip, download that. Once that's downloaded and extracted, you'll find this folder. And inside here, this config.ocio is what we're looking for. Now, you might want to enable the OCIO plugin in here if it's not enabled already. And once you've restarted, you should be able to right click, go miscellaneous and open color IO configuration. Make one of those, maybe call it, maybe call it DJ in config because this is going to be taking our DJ in footage and changing it into linear color space so that Unreal can get the colors exactly right coming from your camera and get it exactly right. So first thing you want to do is find the OCIO file. It's not the same as other plugins. You don't have to copy this into the Unreal folder. Uh, you can just find the path in here like you would have a media file and then you can add two array elements. So these, this is taking from a whole massive dropdown of all these different LUTs and the you can see things like Canon, GoPro, Sony. So what this is doing is processing the colors from the Canon and turning it into Unreal's linear color space or sRGB so it will preview correctly on your computer. Yeah, cool. So in here we've got we got some cameras. I'm going to try this one. It could be a camera similar to this. Obviously, I don't know which camera I'm using or what what color space my camera uses, but you can look that up. It's quite often one of these, but uh, we also want the output sRGB because that's going to be what our monitor is. So choose that one. And we also want the utility uh, linear sRGB because that's what Unreal's color space is. So we're going to be going camera to linear, then linear to output so we just need those three so back in here we got our dj config first thing we want to do is go to our chroma key layer 
And as another transform pass, we want the open open color IO pass. And what that's gonna do, let's make sure this is at the top because we want the colors to be right before we start chroma keying. So down here, we want to add this. And from here, we can select our input and our output. Oh my God. <laughs> You can see it's had an effect. This is probably because I've got the wrong kind of camera. Um, I will quickly just try and find a camera that makes more sense. And if you want to, um, if you want to experiment with other color spaces, you can just go in here and add more, or you can delete them. The amount that you have in here does count towards your final build. I think this is why they're not giving you the whole list in one. They're letting you pick from the list because they want you to control how many you choose from from here, but also how many are included in the final build. So yeah, you can just add another potential input. Try Canon Log 2, see if that works. And then you can just pick it from here. So this helps if you have a camera. I think I worked out that because this is downloaded off the internet, it's already going to be an sRGB color space. So just for this demonstration, I just kept it as sRGB to linear. And you know, we do have a difference in the color. Um, but just for this demonstration, I'll show you the next point. So we've set up our camera going in and being read by Unreal in the right way. Uh, you can also look at these values down here by mousing over things to see if the values are right. You can use a Use a key or something, a diagram. If you want to get super, super technical, super matchy with it, you can do that. Then next up, what we want to do is go into our main comp, add another open color pass into this, into the output of this. So we're looking at taking the composition, rendering it out for our screens. So it, so it shows right on our screens. So we can go and add one of these to our preview. And here we need to drag in the same one, but we can select linear sRGB, going out to sRGB. So the colors are looking all right, stuff you can play with still, but you'll notice they're different in our render target compared to our preview because we've only edited the preview. We can add this to the output pass as well. So for my example, this wasn't super needed uh, because it was coming in as RGB anyway, and I actually think it looks more similar uh, as is. But this is really important for if you're wanting to get your colors exactly right, you're looking to match your camera feed in and have it show up correctly on the monitor. So just the key thing to remember is that we're going from our camera's color space into Unreal's linear color space. Then out here, we're looking at previewing it, looking at previewing it again, going from Unreal's linear out to sRGB or whatever your monitor's color spaces or whatever you want to preview it in color space wise so as for sending out sending this out instead of preview the render target doesn't allow you to change the color so we would have to either do a another pass on top of this a matte element with the color space edition which i've shown you before or we can also we can also set a media capture output like a black magic or a deck link for those of you using that and in that you do get a option to use the open color IO again down here open color IO so we can then drag that in and do the same as what we've done with our preview so from linear out to sRGB so that'll be sending out uh, black magic wise or deck link wise if you need to do it that way so I hope this shows you how to tweak your colors using this open color IO and the importance of getting those color spaces the same it's not something you can do just with color grading particularly it's much easier to just try and match those color spaces so if your colors are coming in looking weird it's probably because of that for my example I'm actually just gonna uh, get get rid of my color conversions because I think it looks pretty similar to the color space uh, that's intended. It's not a million miles off, so uh, I'm just gonna do some color grading and stuff on this and have it dynamically lit to get to get it looking a bit more within the scene. But that's something that's really important to note if your colors are looking way blown out, way out of whack. It's probably because of your color space, and yep, that's how you saw that out. So next up, we're gonna get into actually keying this guy out onto the background, and that should bring this together really nicely. So I'll show you that in the next one. Cheers.